One of the downsides of the Lenovo Lock 15 this year for 2023 is that it only comes with a single stick of 8GB DDR5 in single channel mode. So to get best performance, we know that we need to have operation of RAM in dual channel mode. So in this quick video here, we're going to take off the bottom panel, show you how to upgrade with this additional 8GB stick that I've acquired of Patriot. 5600 megahertz ram we'll install this in the sodim module we'll boot up the machine confirm that 16 gigabytes is working and indeed running at 5600 megahertz in dual channel mode and that'll be all for this video stay tuned as a follow-up video will be coming which then compares the 8 gigabytes versus the dual channel 16 gigabytes benchmarks in both cpu and performance workloads as well as gaming benchmarks that i've already just presented in my review video for the lenovo lock 15 so let's jump right in get the top the bottom panel off and we'll guide you through how to do that You'll need a tool called a guitar pick that looks very similar like this to pry open some of the hinges and some of the clips that are held down for the bottom panel. And of course, you'll need a precision screwdriver set with bits like this with Phillips heads, star screws and all the other different types of screws. After that, using a straight Phillips head screw on this device, you can get the eight screws around the perimeter out of this device. Once you have these eight screws removed, keep in mind that these screws are longer in the back and the ones on the front are shorter. Be careful as you work your way around the, the plastic panel here to get this off. Use something called a guitar pick to try to get your way in there and to snap off the pins which are being held in place. Be careful not to snap those because screws you can find replacements for, but if you snap enough of those pins, you'll have a floppy bottom panel and nobody wants that. Nobody wants a floppy bottom, believe me. Okay, so that said, once you've done that, you'll then need to remove this deco housing. There's two screws here as well. Undo these two screws, then rotate the device around like yay. And using your guitar pick again, go around to the panel here and start to pry. So once you've got a little bit of a separation like this, of a nerve wracking process, because what you do not want to do is damage it. But at the same token, you don't want to be too lackluster with your handiwork here, because you won't get the things to separate. Okay, so work your way around the perimeter of the device like so, and then you should be able to start to pull off this cover like yeah, like that. Let's get this side off as well. There you go. Once the clips are out, you'll be able to pull this part out. This is just the housing. There is no ports or anything inside. This is just cover and mounting for the ports as well as this design around the heat vents. Okay, now with the deco cover here removed with these two screws and usually uh, using the guitar pick and the small pry tool, we'll now take off the bottom panel here. We should be able to get it off, uh, but there are two additional screws here. So do keep in mind that you'll need to work on these two screws as well and make sure you keep the screws marked and separated. These are M2 by 8L in case you need to have sizing, in case you strip a screw or lose a screw, you can always get replacements for these screws. But of course, try to have some sort of organization system when you're doing something like this so you don't lose the screws in the first place. All right, so two more screws here. We should be able to get this bottom panel off. Oh, there's another screw here. Be careful, guys. Pay attention to the screws they're hiding. Yeah, that one almost got me. I could have snapped my bottom panel in half or into a pieces. Okay, we'll carefully take that screw out, set it aside. And here we are. So this is the bottom panel. It's plastic. It's got a little bit of foam here and other material to help dissipate some of the heat, but nothing too drastic, nothing too exemplary here. So we'll put that away for a moment. Now let's turn this right side up. So here we are looking at the insides of this lock 15 here. We've got our RAM slots here. So we've got one module. There we go. So just remove this like that carefully. Once you remove this cover here, you've got some, also I believe uh, maybe some graphite material or something here that acts as a heat uh, transfer material for the RAM. So we've got one stick here of uh, eight gigabytes of DDR5, 5600. And this one looks to be a SK Hynix module. So we'll leave that in there. This is the first slot. You can see here it's mentioned DDR5-1. So hopefully you can see that on the cam. It's a little bit overexposed. We'll leave that there. Next thing to do is to grab our next DDR5 stick here and we're going to slot this in here and I believe if we line these up, this should go face up. There we go. Make sure you hear that click sound when you've inserted the module so that the pins are locked in here all the way and keep in mind that they can only go in one direction. These are not bi-directional chips. All right, here we are now back at the desktop. So we'll press Control shift escape 
and we'll get to our task manager here we'll hop over to the performance menu and if we click on memory here we're now seeing that we're reporting two of two and we have here 5600 megahertz is the speed of the ram that's running and we are we're showing that the ram factor is so dim and because we have two of two it means it should be running in dual channel mode but to double confirm that we'll hop over hop over to hardware info and make sure that that is indeed the case and finally, opening up here, hardware info, we can see here that the RAM is indeed being reported. However, in this case, it's being reported as four channels and quad channel RAM. I'm not quite sure why this is so. I've done some searching around the internet, but I really couldn't find any information that pertains particularly to the 7840HS, the Zen 4 CPU that's in here. All right, so after figuring out what's happening here with my memory modules, I, had, I wasn't quite sure why I was getting quad channels here reported in... Uh, hardware info so I updated this to the latest version to see if that would have been the issue perhaps that was not it I also went in and I ordered an additional module of DDR5600 megahertz from the same brand so I'd have two Patriot sticks of 5600 megahertz the same RAM to avoid any issues with potential conflicts with different timings on different types of modules the original stick that was provided in the machine was from SK Hynix and I figured that I would omit uh, or at least rule out that option so after placing in both 5600 modules from Patriot, both 8 gigabytes, I do see that Windows Task Manager does still correctly report 5600 megahertz, but I learned something new about DDR5. And in 25 years I've been doing this, I've not seen anything like this happen. But basically, uh, the reason it reports quad channels is because there's two channels within, it's like pseudo channels within each DDR5 module, and thus two channels actually here are shown as, or misrepresented as quad channel rather than uh, dual channel ram which it rarely is running so that means we now have successfully 16 gigabytes of ram ddr5 at 5600 megahertz running in dual channel in a separate video now we'll be running all of the benchmarks again to show what the difference is between 8 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes and see if there is a performance uplift thanks again for watching this video that's all i have to say for now stay tuned and get subscribed for the follow-up video where we compare 8 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes for office and productivity workloads as well as gaming benchmarks to see what difference there is 8 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes going into 2024 here very soon um, and that's all there is to say for now thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video